first day of performances, when we just opened the show for the first time, we'd been rehearsing for a couple weeks to try to get it ready to go. We opened the show, we did it for the first time, and after the performance, they seemed to love it. I went out in the lobby, they didn't know who I was, because I'm not in the show. And I'm just standing there walking and saying, thanks, thanks for coming. And these kids just loved it. They were hooting and hollering and talking about how cool it was. And one boy came right up to me, put two thumbs up and said, man, that was rad. And I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. It was the most perfect review you could get. <laughs> All right, gang, is everybody ready for the next official meeting of the Main Street Kids Club? Where cool is the rule. And every day is an adventure. Yeah. It's the Main Street. One of the things I love about the Main Street Kids Club is the fact that it is a human story. It's about um, friendship and trying to find your way in the world, which I think is great. But then it all happens around math. And people say, how can you have math in a musical? Well, we do. And part of that is definitely akin to the great work of Stuart Murphy. Stuart's books are incredible. The ends of the books all have a section that talks about uh, activities and stuff that you can do as a parent with your child to incorporate math into everyday games and things that you do all the time. Um, and so I started from that point. I thought, well, if there are ways to uh, use math with your child all of the time, why can't we do that in a play? And so that's what we did. So at the beginning of the play, we meet Toby, who is a young kid who had just moved to town. And he's found this treasure map. And it looks really old, and he thinks it's pretty cool. And so he sings this song called It's a Map, where he is very excited to show this map that he found to the Main Street Kids Club. Once the kids see this in the secret town of the adventures that are in store, they will let me join the club, no Suddenly he hears them coming and he's not supposed to be in the clubhouse. That is when we move into the next part of the song, which is called the MSKC. The kids come in, they sing their sort of theme song, if you will. Toby runs out of the clubhouse because he's not supposed to be in there on his own because he's not a member yet. And at the end of the song, he finally knocks at the door. They ask him three questions uh, that are math problems to see if he knows the answer to get in. And once they let him in, the rest of the play goes on to let us know that Toby will find his way sooner or later. Uh, the next song is called 100 Days of Cool, based on the book 100 Days of Cool, and it um, tells about how they mistakenly thought the 100th day of school to be the 100th day of cool, and so the teacher thinks it's a great idea, and she says, let's have 100 days of cool, and so the kids try for 100 days to do something cool every day, and it's a great song. We're gonna celebrate 100. The next song in the show is called Perry the Penguin, which is based on the book Less Than Zero. Uh, and it is basically the story of Perry the Penguin who wants to get a scooter and so he's got to save up his clams in order to do that. Now, let's make a graph to keep track of how many clams he has. Before today, I had zero clams, not a zilch. But now, I have four whole clams. <laughs> One clam, two clams, three clams, four. Wow, you've gone from zero to four clams in one day. But I still need five, that's a whole lot more. Perry the penguin, he's a whole bottle of fun. When given the choice between work and play, Perry will play. The 
next song of the show is called If I Could Just Be Me, and that's a completely original song. It's not based on any of the books. It's based on the character, Toby, in the show. And it's about um, his personal feelings on how he really wishes he could just be a little bit more of a go-getter so that they would notice him. Uh, it's the ballad in the show, and it's very sweet. I could make a great companion, but I've got to let it show. I have got to make them notice me I've got to let them know That I would love to join their circus If they could use a clown like me Give me just a moment I'll be what I can be I know that I could fit right in If I for the show is absolutely incredible and that is due completely in part to the incredibly talented Michael Mahler. Michael Mahler is a musician and a composer and a performer and a lyricist and he is incredible. So the two of us worked really hard together to create songs that were fun and modern and yet cool in a way that you don't expect. We didn't want it to sound sort of like your typical musical theater, so Mike has created these songs that sort of range from some that are sort of typical musical theater, but then some that are very jazzy, others that are kind of hip-hop sounding, and uh, it gives a, a flavor to the musical that I think is completely original, and that's a, an incredible thing. Mike's done a great job with the music. When the kids finally find the treasure, one of the things they find is this time capsule. And in our play, inside the time capsule is a comic book that is called Captain Invincible and the Space Shapes. And it is based, obviously, on the book Captain Invincible and the Space Shapes. And the kids just basically read this comic book and act it out because they think it would be fun. And so it is all about how they use the shapes to to be a spaceship and it's live on stage and there's a kid that acts like a dog and there's a spaceship that crashes and there's a monster from outer space and the kids just love that part. They have a great time and hoot and howl. It's awesome. The last song in the show is called Lemonade and it is based on the book Lemonade for Sale which is about uh, the selling of lemonade and how they chart their sales throughout the week to keep track of how many cups of lemonade they sell. I can make a bar graph. I'll list the number of cups up the side like this and I'll show the days of the week along the bottom like this. two versions of the show. The full show has six actors in it, and then we have a smaller version of the show, um, which is only five, um, just to make it a little bit easier to produce, or if you wanted to, for example, like I do, take the show out on the road and take it to schools, we do a touring version, and having less actors makes it a little bit more affordable for a company to produce.
started books are all about math, teaching math skills in the context of stories, but I had to wonder how that was going to convert into a musical, a staged musical for kids. Well, it converted very well indeed because the math is there, the math skills are reinforced, and it's all part of one cohesive story, an exciting story that I think will get the kids' attention. I mean, the whole notion of a musical about math for children is really an exciting idea. Yeah.